it's really about taking a step back and, and looking around and making sure that we're, people feel welcome in an in, in everyday setting. Are we checking in? Are we discussing things? Do you feel safe bringing things up when you're not happy? Or you know, is there still a work-life balance where you don't feel taxed and tired and like you have to sacrifice one thing for the other? If it's gonna be hard to build fun if you're not having fun. Welcome to the Attraction Pros Podcast, where we discuss the latest trends and challenges facing the attractions industry today. We chat with some of the top leaders in the field and provide resources that will help develop your career in this great industry. I am Josh Liebman. I am obsessed with the guest experience and helping attractions make that their top priority for success. And I'm Matt Heller. I am passionate about organizational effectiveness, leadership development, and employee engagement. Now sit upright, hold on tight, and get ready for the Attraction Pros Podcast. Hey, Matt, how's it going? It's going fantastically. Josh, how are you? All right. Now, always nice to throw in the adverb every once in a while. <laughs> Trying to keep you fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, question for you. Yes, sir. How do you make a hanky dance? <laughs> I don't know. How do you make a hanky dance? You put a little boogie in it. <laughs> but I'm, I know. I know you can't control yourself right now. No, I, I, I can. That's, that's, <laughs> if only you were actually sitting at your drum set right now. We should right? Do that next time. Yeah, then I can get the actual. <laughs> I can do that. I, yeah. Um, is that one of your favorite jokes to tell Jacob? Uh, you know, it will be once he's old enough to appreciate it. <laughs> and before he's old enough to no longer appreciate it. There is that, that fine window of time. And, and then yeah. probably to the point again where he will later appreciate it. Yes, yes, so it's cyclical. Yes, yes, so eventually, eventually. Yeah. But no, I'm, you know, just, just thinking about, you know, my favorite dad jokes. And what brings up dad jokes on the Attraction Pros podcast? Well, so the guest that we have today uh, is a big fan of dad jokes. And you know what, as we get into this interview, uh, you know, you said you saw him speak at IAPA back in November, and that that came up as a topic of conversation. So at, uh, it's always nice to to bring in some very, very light energy into the podcast room every <laughs> every now and then. And, uh, and that was how we concluded the, the interview today. But Nick Taylor is our guest uh, from Masterminds Studio, and we have a, a phenomenal conversation, a phenomenal interview with him. And then, yes, spoiler, you will hear some some more dad jokes towards the end of this episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned the session that I got to see him moderate at, uh, at IAPA, which was called A Seat at the Table, Diversity and Inclusion in Themed Entertainment. And, you know, they had so many wonderful things that they, that they talked about. And Nick, in particular, you know, just moderated the session so well. Um, I thought he'd be a great, uh, great guest to have on. Actually, Monet Rooney, uh, one of our previous guests, was was a part of that panel, and um, you know I think what's what's really interesting about the themed entertainment industry is we talk so much about storytelling and we talk so much about you know diverse um, uh, viewpoints, but sometimes and Nick has a great example of this. Sometimes the people telling that story may not come from such a diverse background. And so one of the things that he really advocates, especially with his company that he started just before the pandemic, is uh, to truly give people an opportunity from marginalized communities that may not have otherwise known that these kind of careers are possible. Yeah. Uh, and then, like you said, yes, he, he started his company in 2019. So shortly before the pandemic and being able to get to hear the story of the entrepreneurship and the, and the formation of the company with such a strong focus on uh, bringing as, as wide range of possible of voices in the room and seats at the table, like you mentioned, the name of the session at IAPA, uh, it is inspirational really for, you know, for anybody who is looking to build a career within this industry and uh, the importance of being able to see that there are uh, there are, are people who look like you in in these roles, in these in these jobs, and in these careers. And in Nick's standpoint, from the entrepreneurship uh, a component, that he uh, formed this business and that um, and that he's able to inspire the next generation of yes, theme designers and everything that that goes with that, engineers and uh, and and control systems and and all of that, but also business creation and entrepreneurship as well. 
Absolutely. And one of the things that um, I found really fascinating the way he talked about it was, you know, when you think about hiring a new employee, you think about recruiting them, where you're going to find them, asking the right interview questions, are you going to do a group interview? But, you know, he really talks about way before that, getting involved in the community. What is the the, the outlook in the community and, and how are those those potential employees being educated in their, their STEM programs. And, you know, as he says, roller coasters don't just pop up out of the ground. So you need engineers, you need um, uh, fabricators, you need all those uh, trades and, and creative people to put that all together. And that doesn't just happen overnight. So, you know, it's not just about recruiting the best person you can find, but, you know, as organizations, it's probably within our best interest to think about how those those potential employees are being educated, you know, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many just great takeaways from this, from this interview. I found myself just scribbling down notes and, and quotes throughout the entire conversation. And, uh, and I'm really excited to get to this phenomenal interview with Nick Taylor from Mastermind Studios. Nick Taylor, welcome to the Attraction Pros podcast. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm good. How are you all doing? We're great. We're great. Awesome. Can't wait to kind of jump into this conversation. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about you, uh, your your history in the industry, and of course, about Masterminds Studios? Um, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Nick Taylor. Uh, I am originally from Dallas, Texas, currently residing in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I am the owner and uh, creative director of Mastermind Studios, which is a themed entertainment design and build firm. It was started right before the pandemic. So uh, if nothing else, my timing is impeccable. <laughs> uh, and um, one of the reasons that it was I started it was having been in the theme entertainment industry, I you know fell in love with it, knew I wanted to continue doing it, share it with others. And I, it was really about creating a space where um, individuals from marginalized backgrounds could have a place to be in this industry. Uh, not to say that there's not space for others, but um, it's more about, you know, safe harbor and, and feeling comfortable working around those who look like you and don't look like you, if that makes sense. So, you know, here we are a few years later, uh, still in the pandemic. So that's exciting. Um, <laughs> and making a go of it with, with uh, entertainment and museum and attraction finds. Yeah. Well, I think the, uh, the mission is incredible. And I know that we're definitely going to be diving deep into that and talking a lot about it. But, uh, but in the meantime, can you actually talk a little bit about the jump from employment to entrepreneurship and what that was like, obviously pre-pandemic <laughs> and, uh, and looking at it, you know, from the standpoint of, of kind of going off in your own and, and uh, your drive to, to build this business. Sure. I've been a, uh, to my own chagrin, I've been a serial entrepreneur for uh, a while now. Um, and it, it just, it's, it just made sense to take the bull by the horns and, you know, I guess for lack of a better phrase, be the change that I wanted to see. Uh, so, you know, once I was, you know, once I left my previous employer, uh, you know, again, it was just before the pandemic started. And it was one of those things where the question became, well, what do you do? Do you go look for another position somewhere else um, and, and try to fit in there? Or do you start trying to fill in the gaps that maybe the larger organizations aren't quite focused on and able to fill? Um, so it, it was really about just uh, serving not only locally, but trying to get a, a national presence of being a group of diverse designers who wanted to tackle the industry and be out there and have our faces seen and known and really do what we like to do, which is build fun. Uh, so, you know, the entrepreneurship thing was a, was a no brainer. Uh, and it's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. We'll, we'll call it fun. <laughs> Well, and what, what was it like starting a company to build fun right as the pandemic started? It was a delight, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as, as one can expect. You know, uh, there's, there's been some pros and cons, obviously. I think the cons are pretty um, self-explanatory in the sense that a lot of things, the whole world shut down. 
and the opportunities that would normally be there weren't there. At the same time, the opportunities that normally wouldn't be there were there. Uh, we were fortunate in the sense that we hooked up with, with organizations that because of their fiscal year lineup or because of events that got canceled, they had some discretionary funds and they were like, okay, this is a great time to really look at what our processes are, where we are you know, with our, with our entertainment and when, with how we're interacting with guests and let's try to ramp it up, let's, let's revamp, let's um, you know, do what a lot of people do, which is restart and really consider uh, the intention behind what it is they're doing. So it was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh <laughs> it definitely had some ups definitely had downs but i think you know so far we've been fortunate that it's still around and <laughs> um new there's new projects coming down the pike which is great and yeah it's it's been a learning experience for sure <laughs> yeah and absolutely i i can only imagine um so when you talk about kind of building the company to, to create a diverse group of designers, of employees. Um, would love to know if you're able to expand upon that on what that really looks like for masterminds. And even on the website says we're excited about themed entertainment, but we're even more passionate about creating opportunities for others within the industry. Um, so I'd love it if we're able to unpack that and what that looks like from the standpoint that drives your hiring and employment decisions, as well as just in Internally within your company culture and working with clients as well. Absolutely. Well, so, you know, let's be very clear. Mastermind Studio is an equal opportunity employer. Um, there is no discrimination or, or bias that is, you know, uh, permeating any, any higher hiring decisions or company culture. However, or at least I should say at the same time, um, when you think about when we think about how we approach certain projects or how we approach recruiting techniques, we definitely want to make sure that opportunities are given to those um, who might not normally see those opportunities. I know, you know, I've always loved theme, theme entertainment, and I've been in it for, you know, you know, in one way or another, my entire life. And as a child, I didn't know that these opportunities were afforded. Uh, I didn't know beyond, you know, I've been to Disney World. I still haven't been to Disneyland. Um, <laughs> but I, I knew that these places existed and that somebody somewhere had to be involved with it. I just didn't know how. And I think that uh, kind of leads to an entire systemic issue of how youth and students, especially uh, of color or from marginalized communities, are being approached and are being educated in terms of STEM and STEAM. Um, one thing that you know, I've, I've had the fortune and misfortune, misfortune of meeting individuals in this industry who are from marginalized community in one way or another and don't necessarily feel seen or heard or safe. Um, and myself being black, uh, surprise, I <laughs> can relate to that and definitely wanted to, again, build a space where you felt included, where you felt seen and heard. Um, so it's, it's definitely on the website, it's in our social media, um, and when we'll be going forward, basically making it known that this is a, not only a safe space, it's an inclusive space, it's more about creativity and ideas. Um, and knowing that when you bring your culture and your background to the table, it helps drive innovation and storytelling and um, opens up a whole new world of ideas that others might not necessarily have a vantage point of. So I don't, I don't want to ramble on, but <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it permeates everything that I do, that we do. When we go to IAPA and we are at you know, trade shows and conferences, we look around the room and we see who's there, who's involved. Um, one of the primary reasons for even starting this company in the manner that I did or, you know, or with the mission statement is, I had a former coworker tell me that he worked on a very large uh, project in DC that had 
the focus of African American history. And he said, you know, when the project started, we all gathered in the space together to get on the same page and, and talk about the project and meet one another. And as I looked around, it was a room full of white guys on a project that is about African American history. And ever since I heard that story, it stuck with me. And that was a few years ago now. Uh, and I am not surprised by it, but I had to say to myself, what can I do or what am I doing to help change that? How are we making sure that those who are telling the stories have that voice and have that perspective? And it's not um, a misrepresentation of, of what we want people to know and see and hear. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, Nick, there's, there's so much there. I think we can, we can use the springboards to, to deeper conversations. One of the things that I would like to um, maybe pick out of that is how you said, you know, people want to be seen and heard and feel safe, of course, right? So I'm curious from your perspective, what is, maybe it's a two-part question, what is something that you do at Masterminds to help your, your employees feel safe, right? But then what are some things maybe that you've seen that other organizations are doing maybe even inadvertently that make people not feel safe. So it's kind of that, what are we doing to make people feel safe? And then, and then what are pe other people doing that may not make, make people feel safe even, the, even if they don't know they're, they're doing it? Right. Um, I think the things that I've, I've seen and heard, um, you know, in the society we're in, there are certain areas where I think <laughs> there's a lack of respect or understanding um, there are certain, cause I'm, I'm not here to point fingers or place blame or anything like that, but I think there are certain industries where traditionally we believe that another, you know, gender doesn't necessarily belong, um, or someone of a certain background doesn't necessarily belong there or doesn't understand it or doesn't get it as it were. Um, and I think, I think that is an issue where that needs improvement. Um, I think even in the language that's used by different organizations and in different industries, uh, at, at Mastermind Studios, we try to be respectful and responsive of, of how we communicate. Uh, when we speak and talk, you know, we, we try not to use, at least for myself, uh, like guys or, or masculine heavy uh, verbiage, uh, being more inclusive, being more uh, vague and, you know, being from Texas, y'all is a great, uh, fallback. <laughs> um, all of y'all are doing great. Uh, <laughs> very inclusive, very inclusive, <laughs> uh, whether it's, whether it's good or bad, all y'all, um, there's something to be said about making sure that we are using proper pronouns, uh, not just what we think is proper, but what some, how someone would like to be referred um, making sure that there is no differentiation between even positions. Like it's, it's, it's a, we're a very small team, uh, and it's essentially a flat hierarchy. I, yes, I do own it. And that is not a, that's not a brag. If anything, please take this from me. <laughs> it's very, very daunting. Um, so I, I that's one of the reasons why I, I chose the title creative director, because um, what we're, like I said earlier, what we're building is fun. What we're doing is, is bringing a client's vision to life. It's not about um, who's necessarily in charge or uh, supervising who. Um, but I mean, obviously, there, someone needs to captain the ship, sure. Uh, but it's, it's really about taking a step back and, and looking around and making sure that we're, people feel welcome in an in, in everyday setting. Are we checking in? Are we discussing things? Do you feel safe bringing things up when you're not happy? Or, you know, is there still a work-life balance where you don't feel taxed and tired and like you have to sacrifice one thing for the other? If it's gonna be hard to build fun if you're not having fun. Uh, and some days are harder than others, sure. But ideally we want to make sure that you wake up every day and are excited about what you're gonna take on that day. Yeah. One of the other things uh, you mentioned as well is uh, the advantage of bringing a diverse group of voices into the room that drives innovation, storytelling, and you said it opens up a vantage point that wouldn't otherwise be seen. 
Um, so the way I see this is that this this truly influences the uh, the final product that you deliver, and that it's it's seen, it's felt, it's tangible for the client, and then for the for the end user as well. So can you can you expand a little bit on that and what that really means? Sure, uh, that's a that's a good one. Um, I think there is the I think there's something to be said about the stories that are told and that belong to certain cultures. And I think sharing those stories is not only important, but vital. That being said, there is a fine line between hearing a story you haven't heard before and enjoying it, and then appropriating a story or uh, over, over indulging in said story. Um, I think if, if we were to follow a traditional path with, let's say, an organization like Disney, you would have your traditional stories, um, grim fairy tales, however you, want to prefer, however you want to refer to it, of, you know, your Snow White, your Beauty and the Beast, your, give me another one, Toy Story per se. Um, you wouldn't necessarily have your Moana, your Black Panther, your um oh come on don't be this guy you're uh <laughs> most, one of the most recent marvel films that i cannot think of the name of right now so embarrassing uh <laughs> i am <laughs> my, my my point is there she thank you there we go <laughs> Goodness, um there's something to be said about when when you hear a story from a different perspective from a different culture it, at least in my experience, it opens up your mind to how your stories are told and addressed and your cultural background. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't wanna just say the same thing twice. That's okay. Well, what, I, what I'm hearing you talk about there, Nick, kind of re reminds me of how people talk about travel, right? The more you travel, the more you experience different cultures, the more that you, understand that it's not just about you in this in this world on this planet right and right. and as i'm hearing you talk about having different people at the table and that res that result is a story that has more wide appeal or maybe it's even narrow appeal but then you you get it out to a wider audience so that people understand that again it's not just about them that you start to see the richness of what those stories can bring um that's right. kind of how i am interpreting what what you're saying you're, and you're, you're spot on. Um, you know, I guess another good analogy for that would be food. If, if you only know the, the foods of your ethnicity, of your culture, then you will quickly tire of it. And there's only so many ways you can prepare said dish. Uh, but to open up your, in this case, literal and figurative palate, you're able to enjoy a different subset of options of things that you didn't even know that you liked. Uh, you know, the famous saying is you don't know what you don't know. And then when you're exposed to it and you see it and you have learned something different, it can honestly truly be eye-opening and life-changing uh, mm -hmm. to even, you know, sit at the table and say, you know, what is the Lunar New Year? What is Yom Kippur? What is Kwanzaa? What is Christmas? What is Hanukkah? What are these things that I've not heard before? And do they speak to me? Do I relate to them? You know, I might not be of that ethnicity or faith or background, but holy crap, this really, this really spoke to me and, and stuck out of my mind. So, I mean, there's, I don't see a downside to diversity. I'm going to go on the record and say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's well said. And I, yeah, I appreciate you um, elaborating and expanding on that. Can, can we now take that through and talk about what that looks like if you're in meetings with clients or even prospective clients. If, if let's say there's an RFP and you're, you're up against other similar firms and um, you know, this is, this is an, an excellent way to be able to, to stand out in addition to the quality of the work that you do as far as you know, using it to say, this is, this is what you're going to be able to, to get from working with masterminds. Um, yeah, there's, so there's something to be said about not only what we can bring to the table and the stories that can be told, uh, at the same time, I think, you know, when you are working with prospective client, it helps to, with that diverse background, with that, that eye on different cultures and different 
flavors, you're able to not only say, hey, what if you did this, which could be a game changer for what the project is, but also, hey, maybe you don't do that. And they say, well, wait, how, why, why wouldn't I do that? And you're able to explain, well, you know, your guest from this background might not see it the way I think you're seeing it. And I would just caution you against so on and so forth. I would caution you against um, making your, your exhibitions and your attractions not as accessible as they could be. You know, in, in your mind, sure, it's interactive and you reach up and you touch it and it's great. But what if I can't reach up and touch it? How do I get that same experience? How do I get that same feeling of enjoyment if I don't have the same tools available to me that someone else might have? And, you know, we understand that you, you can't please all the people all the time. <laughs> uh, but there's something to be said about an attempt and showing your intention. Intention is, is huge uh, because no one's perfect and mistakes might be made. But to even acknowledge and say, you know what, we, we didn't consider that, uh, <laughs> but we will do better in the future. And we're going to work to make this more inclusive, accessible um more entertaining I, I think you're only doing yourself a, a, a service by considering different viewpoints mm -hmm. um and and at one of my past employers we used to sit around a table and do hazard analysis which was basically we had an we had an, uh, an attraction of some sort and we said <laughs> what's the best way we can break this thing if i'm <laughs> you know joe schmo jane schmo if I come up and I punch this thing, what happens? Well, the whole thing falls over, it catches on fire, people are hurt, they die. Okay, well then great, let's build this in a manner where if someone punches it, it, it doesn't fall over or it bounces back or maybe there's a retaining wall between the or dividing wall between the two, so you can't do that. Um, yeah, there's, there's just, I, I think the fun part about this industry is that uh, um, there's, it's such a large pie to which there are many slices and there's so many organizations that can, can be involved, if not on one project, then multiple projects, even within a larger project. Uh, and my goal with, with this company is just to do the best we can and sit and do critical thinking, which I know is kind of a hot topic lately, um, <laughs> around all of the different ways that people will not only experience the attraction, but engage with it. Uh, at the end of the day, what are they taking away from the attraction, the exhibit, the ride, the, the visit, the story, the show? Uh, is it, you know, obviously we want them to have a smile on their face, but we also want someone to dig a little deeper and dive a little deeper into something that they might not have seen or heard before and stay engaged and, and learn and be a better person for it. So Nick, I'd like to go back just a little bit because something that you said earlier, just about, you know, bringing people on board into your organization, you, you didn't just talk about certain hiring processes. You were talking about being in the community and STEM programs and, and all these things that are much broader than just what questions are we going to ask on a, you know, on, in an interview and where are we going to recruit, you know, our, our new team members. So can you talk a little bit more about how important that is to, your organization and really to any organization to really look at the community and what's happening with with people even before they're old enough to to work for us you know how important that journey is right it's extremely important there's i've, I've heard a lot of you know i i've often said why are there not more people of color in this industry and the response that i've gotten repeatedly is well because they don't apply and so Okay, little little victim blaming, sure, uh, but also not completely untrue. I also can recognize that. But the greater question is, well, why not? Why people like fun? People want to be, you know, an Imagineer or a architect or a, a, a designer or operator of some sort. But I, I think it goes beyond um, what's uh, available and, and it digs into what is possible. We have started a, a relationship with a local high school um, in Albuquerque that is a high school for entrepreneurs, and we are developing a plan to work with those students to say, 
clearly the traditional path is not one that you're necessarily interested in, interested in which is fantastic. That's great. What do you want to do? How do you go about it? What are the skill sets you need to achieve what it is you want to achieve? I, I think, you know, a lot of times it's, it, may, it may or may not be lost how much STEM and STEAM are critical to what we do for a living in themed entertainment and themed attractions. Uh, roller coasters don't just sprout up out of the ground, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there, there is math and science and uh, critical thinking involved in all aspects of this. And I think a lot of times our society can get focused on making sure that students or, you know, children have a, a fallback, have a degree, have a plan B, which I don't argue against. And I think it's a great idea, but it's our education system is not a one size fits all. And how do you reach back and address not only a path going forward, but systemic issues that have placed students in an area where it's like, I can't have my kid focused on roller coasters. I need them to be eating during the day. I need them to pass this test. I need them to be able to get into college so they can do X, Y, Z. And so it's a, it's a large, large issue that I, and I don't in any sense think that Mastermind Studios is going to single-handedly resolve systemic issues in our society. Um, try as I might, I don't think that that's going to be a thing that, that we check off the list in 2022. <laughs> um, but it, it is a matter of at least putting it out there and saying, you know, when, when, when you have career day, yes, there's a firefighter and yes, there's a doctor and a police officer and a plumber, but also there is a civil engineer. There is a ride designer. There is a show systems operator um, and uh, helping others understand that this is an industry that exists. It is fun. It is doable. And you don't have to be ashamed of it. You can tell your parents that you work in theme parks <laughs> and theme attractions. It's not the end of the world. Um, but, but yes, again, getting back to the original point, education is extremely important. important. Tackling systemic issues is extremely important. And I think it's, it's a step-by-step -step process of how we address not only what future we want for our youth, but how we are going to get them there, how we're going to let them know that anything is possible um yeah that's that's a really that's a really tricky question <laughs> yeah um yeah so so there's a few i guess a few kind of follow-up questions or that um that come to mind but one of them has to do with the angle of entrepreneurship and you said you you work with uh or you work with young entrepreneurs or uh uh, or for those who are aspiring to be. Uh, well, also you mentioned the, the career fair and the types of different careers that are available. Uh, you bring in entrepreneurship into the equation and that I, th I think um, uh, it is a whole new level of inspiration. So is uh, where does that fit in with the narrative to be able to say, there are all these jobs, there's all these opportunities, and there's also the opportunity to really lead the charge and be the trailblazer as well, which is the path that, that you've taken on and saying, I'm, I'm starting the business and, uh, and being an entrepreneur with all of this in mind and woven into the business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my mom used to say, uh, nothing beats a fail, but a try. So I think if you find yourself in a position where whether you're in, it doesn't matter the industry you're in, but focused on this industry. If you are, if you are somewhere and it doesn't feel great or your ideas don't feel fruitful, or I think the inspiration is, is just not there anymore. You have a couple of options. You can remain and be unhappy. You can quit and do something else, or you can give it a shot. And I, and I, I say that to say that we are fortunate that we live in a society where entrepreneurship is easy. Like the actual formation of a company is super easy. And all you can do and all you should do is try. If you're not finding what it is out there that suits you, go it, go it your own way. Give it a shot. Give it a try. The worst that could happen is you meet some other people. Well, I don't want to say the worst that could happen, but <laughs> ideally the worst that would happen is that you meet other people that are like-minded. Maybe you all band together. It's not necessarily a solo train anymore. You're now connecting these cars together. 
then you're all moving down the track in a forward direction. Um, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. I understand that. I totally have, I've met tons of people in my life who are like, that is not for me and I don't know how you do it. Uh, but I had gotten to a point where I was seeing things move in a direction that A, I didn't agree with and B, I definitely felt like there were a lot of opportunities and ideas left on the table. And so the only thing that made sense to me was to pick up that, that mantle and, and move forward and say, hey, look over here, give us a try. Maybe we'll bring something that you like. Maybe we bring something that you don't like. And okay, lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> we're both gonna grow from that. So, I mean, entrepreneurship is, is for lack of a better word, you know, in my blood, both my parents had started their own businesses. And um, so I, uh, there's definitely a, an unfair advantage there. Uh, <laughs> and, and it takes a certain type of personality to say, hey, you know, we're trying a thing, we're starting it, we uh, are just a bare bones crew, but, but give us a shot and see if this works for you. And so far it has worked, it has worked well, and I'm happy with it. Awesome. I, I totally identify with what you say about being an entrepreneur. I had a, um, earlier in my career and we may share this. I was a, a was an audio tech and nice. I, yeah. And I, I, for a while was, you know, working in recording studios and things like that. And I, I thought about going out on my own as a, as a recording engineer, and this is probably my mid twenties. And I was like, no way can I do that. You know what I mean? Like, no way can I go out on my own. And here I am now running my own business, you know, 20 years later. But right. for me, it was about timing, right? And confidence. Right. And I, I didn't feel like at the time, like, I don't want to go look for my own insurance. Like that just didn't seem like you know, something I want to do. Um, but my, my question is, you probably talk to people a lot that have that, that, the energy, right? And the passion to uh, start their own business and be an entrepreneur. What are some of your best pieces of advice for them to kind of get them going in the right, right path? That's a great question. I think um, harkening back to, to what I, I just said a, a few seconds ago, um, I think the greatest, having the passion, having the energy, having the confidence is key. I think in the areas where you feel like, oh, I don't want to do this or I can't do this, it is always excellent to have some sort of mentor to question you and say, why not? Why, why can't you do that? Oh, well, because of, you know, uh, ABC. You're like, okay, well, here's three reasons why we can overcome that. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, then D, like, you know, having someone who's been there and done it is, is, you know, this leads back into the greater conversation we've been having. When you see someone else do it, especially someone that, that you can learn from and, and talk to and be close with, at least in my opinion, it makes it easier and more feasible for you to do. Oh, well, if he can do it, surely I can do it because <laughs> I, I had class with that guy and he's a D student. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's one of the reasons why I was saying, you know, it's important to be in schools and have mentorship and, and reach back and help those who might not want to take a traditional, traditional path because I think a lot of, and I don't mean any offense with this to anybody, but I think a lot of corporate America is going to, is going to say, no, 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 no. It's too much work. It's too hard. Don't do that. Just come join us. Like it's so much easier over here. We've, we've got you. Um, and for a lot of people, that's great. And I'm not fighting against that at all. But for some people, there is that path where they want to say, no, I think I'm going to try this on my own. Uh, and I, I just need a little bit of help and guidance. And, you know, there are great, mentorships out there, whether it be, you know, I think SCORE through SBA, or um, we have a group here, I know it's nationwide, called One Million Cups, which is a group for entrepreneurs uh, to come and share their ideas and get feedback from other entrepreneurs who have been there and done that. Uh, when you have someone to help lead you and guide you, or at least bounce ideas and thoughts off of, it helps. It helps immensely. Um, and that could be you know, I know a lot of companies in our industry say the word spark, but that could be the spark that really ignites something phenomenal, whether, you know, and, and this is my own fault, but I know everyone had to start somewhere, you know, Walt Disney had to be inspired at some point by someone somewhere to say, I can do this, I can make it happen. Um, maybe I don't have the capital, maybe I don't have the personnel at this time, but it all started with the mouse. It all starts somewhere. Let's 
let me just give it a try. And at the worst case scenario, I just, I own a, a orange grove and I just, I grow oranges. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Uh, which is also a viable business option to it's also viable. Own, own an <laughs> it's, not, it's not as exciting, I, I would say, in, in some cases, especially as, as our industry. Um, one of the things you uh, mentioned also as well is is really the um, the the size of the of the issue and the the concern really at at hand of uh, people being able to see themselves in aspiring positions, whether it's in job or career opportunities or in entrepreneurship. And you said it's it's not something that's going to be you know, checked off in 2022. I, the question is, are things at least headed in the right direction? Is there is there progress? Is it moving forward uh, despite the, the existing barriers that are in place? Yes, yes, things are <laughs> things are moving in the right direction. Uh, I know my pause was a little daunting. Um, <laughs> yes, I personally believe things are headed in the right direction. Um, I think the speed at which they're moving could be a little more expedient, but that's a that's a personal preference. Um, I believe we saw record uh, entrepreneurial growth in 2021. Um, if I if I have my facts correct, there we can do a fact check afterwards. Uh, but a lot of people worked for an organization that did not survive the pandemic, uh, or they found themselves laid off or furloughed from their corporation, and. They couldn't, for whatever reason, just sit back and rely on someone else to take care of them. So they went after it and they went out on their own. Um, whether that you know, is being a, a rideshare driver and then having your own version of rideshare, which I've seen before, which is pretty phenomenal, um, or whether it's you know, starting a theme entertainment design business where you've got the skill set to do it. Why not just start doing it for yourself? Knock yourself out. Um, Yes, there's a lot of progress to be made, and there's a lot of progress that has been made. And I think my goal, my hope, my my concern is that we continue moving in a forward direction, uh, and that it only becomes easier and more attainable and more um, inspiring for people to not only not not just be their own boss or be an entrepreneur, but realize that they have what it takes to do whatever it is they want to do, be it for yourself or for someone else or with someone else. It's, it's in there. And it usually just comes down to the inspiration to, to bring that out of you. So Nick, I'm curious, as you started your own uh, business, uh, you know, as you, as you've been talking about, you just mentioned that I've got the skill set, I might as well do it. Right. Well, were there skill sets that you didn't have that you kind of had to learn quickly as you're, you know, going from, being a design and a, and a creative director to now running a business. So what were those different skill sets that you had to learn to do that? Uh, there's a ton of skill sets that I still don't have. And <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I, I have learned a lot in terms of uh, design and the design phases, be it schematic design, design development. Um, there's areas where I've had to take on networking and so there's been a lot of questions and webinars and and you know hands-on on the job training um i think a lot of it comes down to at least in my personal experience know your strengths and know your weaknesses and focus on what it is that you're really good at and outsource the rest Yes, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, there are multiple hats that you have to wear and you should absolutely know a little bit of everything that goes on in your business for sure. Mm -hmm. But in the areas where you are not the strongest, definitely don't do what I did and lose sleep over trying to learn and master every single skill set. That is not how a company or an organization or an industry grows at all. Ideally, you want to find others with those skill sets and provide them opportunities. Hey, you're really good at this. Like you're one of the best I've ever met at this. I've got a couple of things I want to throw your way. So, you know, stand by, I'm going to give you some stuff, really focus and knock those out and then bring them back. And now here we are as a team. Now people are like, do you have any more stuff? Yeah, I have more stuff. Come on over. Like, let's talk about some onboarding and let's talk about some, some part-time full-time positions. Um, it takes a village and it's, it's really about finding the areas where you're strongest and shining your best. 
and in areas where you're not relying on others to help prop you up. Uh, that's to me, that's just, that's a win-win across the board. Mm. Uh, it takes a lot of stress off of you. It puts, um, it helps others build a portfolio and have opportunities that they wouldn't necessarily have. And then I've been fortunate enough, and I, I try to do this even today, um, cross-training is super important. If there's an area you might not be strong at or interested in until you are, again, exposed to it. And you're like, that's actually pretty cool. I <laughs> didn't know much about engineering, and now I see that I actually kind of like that. And being nosy, being involved, asking a lot of questions only helps bolster your knowledge, your skill set, your abilities. Again, you don't have to try to master everything, but to at least know something and know a little more, it definitely plays into what everyone else is doing. I, you know, whether I'm an audio tech or working on lighting or even schematic design, if I know, well, look, I know the audio engineers are going to need X, Y, Z. I can start accounting for that earlier. Mm -hmm. And that just makes you a better, easier person to work with when you have taken others into consideration and put that into your design or put that into your plans and started working towards it. Yeah. So Nick, with everything that you know now and being able to focus on what you're really good at and be able to outsource the rest and having the last couple of years of building the business and going through the, the current pandemic, um, I mean that in that we are obviously still, you know, very much in it. Still very much. Uh, is what what advice would you give to yourself? If you could go back in time early on in your career, perhaps as a as a recent college graduate or someone with just a, a lot of ambition and uh, and and drive that would help you on earlier in your career, or advice that you wish you would have heard. Uh <laughs> A, ask for help. Uh, definitely ask for help as, as, as loud and as often as you can. Um, that's a piece of advice I wish I would have gotten earlier on. Uh, advice that I would give to others, read more. Read all the things, just anything. Just read it and, and even if it doesn't make sense to you then, it'll, it'll come to you later. Um, our minds are very good at grabbing bits and pieces of information and then pulling them back at times we didn't even know we had them. <laughs> um, and um, I think, the, yeah, I was going to say something else, but it was just another variation of ask for help. You know, again, finding that mentor, finding someone that is like minded. Um, it, it's not a matter of competition. You know, when I had a, a, an AV rental house, I call people on the East Coast to say, how are you all doing this? How are you addressing this? Because we're not competing. I'm in the Southwest, you're in the Northeast. Our paths are probably not going to cross that often. Uh, but we're still dealing with the same issues. Uh, we're dealing with, with asset management inventory. We're dealing with marketing. And there's no reason for you to try to go it alone when someone's like, yeah, I've done that. I've been there. Here's an idea on how you can tackle that. Uh, and while I've got you, let me ask you how you did so-and-so. And you're like, oh, yeah, totally did that. Uh, asking for help, reading a lot. And I guess the third one is uh, personify that voice in your head, that, that voice of fear that's telling you you can't or you shouldn't. Personify it, sit it down, talk to it, and just say, hey, we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to try it. I know you're not on board with it, and that's okay. You can kick and scream, but we're going to do it. And We've got a plan B. We're going to be okay. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but we're at least going to try because nothing beats a fail but a try. Yeah. So that last part sounds like you're you're being your own mentor, right? You're being your the own your own person that you're you're kicking in the pants. Yeah. I you know every morning every night it's why am I doing this? <laughs> why, why, why did I do this to myself? Do I hate me? Um, but you just have to embrace that fear and 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 move forward and say there's not really anything to be afraid of. I, you know, when we have client pitch meetings and we're going towards to, to after new work, you know, I, I sat down with a, a new client recently and was very nervous. I was like, Oh, well, you know, they're, they're this, that, and the other, and they're not going to want to work with us. So that's fine. And I started talking about things we've done and worked on and, and my experience. And they're like, wow, that's your overqualified. And I was like, Oh, Oh, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, but you just, you just never know. You get surprised by it all. So 
what's what's the worst that could happen they're like i don't like your face okay well neither do i so <laughs> got that in common uh yeah it's it's a it's a it's a fun problem to have yeah speaking of fun and the fact that you build fun right um and i saw this at your uh iapa presentation you mentioned this so i i have to bring it up uh you mentioned you love dad jokes <laughs> so i don't want to put you on the spot too much but would love to hear maybe one or two of your favorite dad jokes the odd thing is i'm not even a dad uh, <laughs> but i love dad jokes um all right so <laughs> I've got some good dad jokes and I've got some inappropriate dad jokes. <laughs> so I'm only gonna tell the good dad jokes. Um, where does a sergeant keep his armies? In his sleeves. Ah, come on. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got that. I'm glad you got that. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I don't know why I like that one so much. Um, oh man, I gotta think of others now. Uh, I was really hoping that that would be that would take a little more time than it did. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're thinking of another one, what do you call a bear with no teeth? Um, I don't know. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we've all, oh no, that's, I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's one about pirates. And I can't remember. It's not the, it's not the favorite letter one. Uh, there's a different one about pirates. I don't know. I'm hoping you guys have more. <laughs> there's, oh, of course, when someone said, you know, hey, tell yeah. me a dad joke, you're like, I don't have many. <laughs> not, you're like, ah, oh, come on. <sighs> Josh has a really good one. Which one? Well, the the fish. <laughs> With fish with no eyes? You just tell yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know. A fish. <laughs> we have officially devolved. Is this or disappointment? <laughs> <laughs> That's Definitely a, a, a general. I, right now. I can't think of over, over the crowd or over anyone uh, <laughs> watching or listening to this now, but. Um, it's always, always good to to occasionally fire those back and forth. Definitely, definitely keeps keeps life fun and entertaining. Absolutely. Um, but Nick, as we start to wind this down here, if people want to learn more about Mastermind Studios or get a hold of you directly, specifically, uh, where would you send them? Great question. Um, <laughs> and this is where it gets tricky. So the best place is the website, Masterminds dot design d e s i g n not there's nothing after that there's nothing <laughs> all the time i you know people are like what's your email address and i'm like nick at masterminds.design they're like dot com and i'm like no that, that was it that was the end just type that and you're gonna be fine um but if for some reason that doesn't work you can also go to www.mastermindsstudios.com uh it is the same website surprisingly uh <laughs> we are on instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook for now until it becomes meta for, for sure. And then I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, then we're, yeah. <laughs> we've got more stuff coming out, more videos and sizzle reels for YouTube and the likes. Um, the majority of where you find us, <sighs> I'm embarrassed now. I believe our Instagram handle is at masterminds dot design uh <laughs> gonna be real sad if that's not it it'll be easy to search otherwise yeah. it's like when someone asks you what your phone number is exactly. I, don't know phone number. I don't call myself <laughs> why would i call myself um it's actually masterminds.studios it's not masterminds.design it used to be masterminds.design uh yeah there's several mastermind studios i will say that fortunately they don't do anything that we do i think one is a tattoo parlor and one is a recording studio um so similar but not the same uh, <laughs> so just look for the big white m with the green triangle kind of like magneto from x-men um 
I get made fun of that for all the time for that. Yeah, website's the best place and social media, uh, more stuff is coming down the pike. Projects we've worked on, projects we're working on. I'm excited. Well, we're excited. We're excited to hear more and learn more and uh, hear more dad jokes. So we'll, we'll we'll set up another call and we'll give you some more lead time to, to yeah. put those together. That would be that would be awesome. Nick, this has been a, a fantastic and, and really fun conversation. So thank you so much for your time and for everybody out there who's watching and listening. Just remember, we are all attraction pros. Thanks for listening to the Attraction Pros podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you can tune in when new episodes release. And even better, please leave us a review on iTunes. For more information, visit attractionpros.com.